embarrassing, totally unacceptable words that were used in the week. But once again, as much as this is becoming a depressingly regular operation for them, this is, Ben, once again about restoring a damaged reputation. There is on the face of it no pressure on Leicester with qualification impossible, but there'll be an awful lot of pressure on those players with an expectant crowd here. And in particular, there is still a bit of an aura about this place. If they lose here, that starts to ebb away. The players will be under no illusion what's required of them today. They need to cut out the errors they made last week. And they need to probably play a more simple game plan against a Glasgow attack that tore them apart at the Scotsman. French referee with a number of storylines operating around him. The first time we've seen him in Europe since he gave a Connacht line-out that shouldn't have been given against Wasps a month or so ago. He was also in charge of this fixture on the opening night in October, and he'll look after the Calcutta Cup match as well in March between England and Scotland at Twickenham. Might have noticed a late, late change on the Leicester replacements bench. Owen Williams has cried off. George Worth has taken his place as a backup back on a night when Leicester are playing purely for pride. Glasgow for the quarterfinals for the first time ever, and the Warriors in the white, playing from right to left in this first half on a bone-numbingly cold night at Welford Road. But the stakes could not be higher for the Scottish team. It's been 111 years since the Scottish team won here at Welford Road. Fettis Lauritonians you may well remember, won 3-0, <laughs> Christmas 1905, it's been that long. What a crack of that game. That's what, it's, well. that's what at stake today, you remember it well, Ben. I think you're on the bench, I think. I'm, I'm guessing, but I'm not, I don't know, I think that was the best <laughs> result ever in the history of Betis, <laughs> Lauritonians. They don't exist anymore, it was that long ago. Left-footed clearance by um, Ali Price, who's enjoying a fabulous season. First choice number nine for Glasgow, pretty much, and... Now Leicester, through Luke Hamilton, can force their way over halfway. Newcomer to the back row this week, swapping places with Will Evans, who's amongst those held back in reserve. Ben Youngs, with plenty of height, makes it contestable, and it fell into the breadbasket of Hamilton. Williams, fit again, and that wasn't too far away from being intercepted. They were undone by an interception trying scotched them back in October and Tommy Seymour was having a look there. Well, he certainly reads the game very well, he's had so many turnovers, so many interceptions over the years and it looked it, but here's Glasgow playing. It's loose, isn't it? We expected Leicester to be a little bit tighter than that. They come here to enjoy themselves, really score, try and get an open game. Finn Russell got the better of Dan Carter in back-to-back -back weekends before Christmas, really set Glasgow up for where they are now. Brilliant fortnight just before Christmas. Line out one by Mike Fitzgerald, brought in ahead of Graham Kitchener, who was industrious in Paris a week ago, but not starting tonight. Stuart Hogg is. He finds Lee Jones. Fraser Brown, the hooker not hanging around with it, engaging Xander Fagerson. Josh Strauss waits. Early try against Rassing in Glasgow before Christmas set them on their way. Just interesting to see Leicester's defence. Usually they're driven out to in team, sorry, an into out team, so they drift across. When they're getting the opportunity, they're lining up outside their men and stepping in, trying to look for that big hit and stopping the ball getting into the wide channels. It'll be interesting to see what they learn from the demolition job in Glasgow in the autumn. Well and it? truly dismantled. Having been in the match for the first 20 minutes, having been ahead, Glasgow really ran away with it. And Tim Swinton in fine form. Glasgow getting to the edge of Leicester's defence and they're getting just round the corner a wee bit. It's a really encouraging start from Glasgow. Taken on by Ryan Wilson. And then Price back to the skipper, Johnny Gray. Once again, it's Josh Strauss. 
Stephen Russell waits. Away. Wilson is in between him, and Wilson again puts the hammer down, almost up to the 22. It's been a very healthy Glaswegian contingent who've made the journey south. They were in their seats on the terraces early, and they're making their voices heard now. Price. He's a jinking menace, and he will be for as long as he's on the pitch. Once more, it's Wilson. Switch from eight to seven to help cover for the loss of the Italian Simone Favaro. Stay back. Who's back? 16 phases. Tiger's defence has been good up till now, but as the fatigue starts to creep in, that's where the errors came at the Scotsdon earlier in the season. Fitzgerald trying to muscle his way through the middle of that, but Glasgow still have possession and can no, still ask some green. attacking questions. Rob Harley just peeling away to the right, but it won't be him just yet. Once again, it'll be Fraser Brown. Now Harley, part of the latch on job. Greg Bateman, amongst the Leicester tacklers. for themselves this season as fine oh, open field runners Glasgow but this is hard work at the lane no, right now doing. doing things a different way Andy yeah they kind of can do the physical last week's game against Munster oh, was incredibly physical and intense but they, they know they've got that expansive game as well which is a good combination obviously Strauss almost getting through the tackle of Bateman and once more Fraser Brown no. Price took it on, and the ball was given to Seymour, who's nearly there, and he scores. Oh, what gymnastics, what an angle from the right wing. And all of the possession at the start of the match, and the first of the points to Glasgow. It'll need a check. That might be a fine, fine try for Tommy Seymour. It's just looking, I think, for the double movement. We don't see. 50, 60 yards away, it seemed OK, it was just rolling over in the tackle, which is allowed, but just very good play, composure play there by Glasgow. This is Tommy Seymour at the very end. Is it a try, yes or no? Is the tackle there by Bitham? He's switching over, that's absolutely fine. You're allowed to, doesn't matter if you've got no momentum, you're allowed to place it immediately, that is considered immediate. It's a great score, brilliantly worked by Price around the base. He's back and... For me, his running is good, so I will award the try. Happy with that? Yes, I agree. What a brilliant start on what may be a road that takes them into the last eight of the Champions Cup tonight. Well, there is. It's, they couldn't go off to a better start. You showed every, everything that's good about Glasgow. You saw there in the 26 phases. There was Ali Price sniping, there was Johnny Gray carrying it, there was Finn Russell pulling the strings, and then you had a supreme finish. Look at Ali Price, just bring Tommy Seymour into the game from the blind side, and then just a bit of guile, a bit of you know flexibility to get the try done. Brilliant start by Glasgow. It was that flat runner, Swinson, that held the defence. They all flew out of the line onto him. And because Seymour was hidden in behind, that late pullback ball from Price creates the hole. What a score that was. 27 phases. Now, what is here available? Oh my goodness, what a start. Xander Fagerson took it on. Use it! Tom Young's trying to do what he can. Continuing to work hard to set the standards that the club expects the captain and he forces the Glasgow mistake. That's the first Glasgow mistake in seven minutes, just allowing, I mean, it was good counter rucking, getting the feet through, making it awkward. Ali Price clearly looking there to kick, he was trying to get it all set up, almost took too long to do that, but good pressure by Leicester. Honing his game under the watchful eye of Mike Blair, who's part of Glasgow's coaching team these days, Henry Pergos um, amongst the replacements tonight. Now, what have the scrums been? What do we expect from this aspect of the game tonight? Uh, it's an area in, when Leicester aren't putting in that they have a lot of success in the Premiership. You can see on their own ball, 92%. 
Warriors 96, but certainly Leicester will look to attack when the feed goes the other way. And they're looking to get an edge on here. Adam Thompson, try scorer on that opening night in Scotston, an all too brief high for Leicester that evening. The Warriors have started much the strongest and they're quickest to the breakdown as well, much more physical. And then cleared away by Russell and Jones is herring after this. And Matt Tate needs to be careful because Jones is quick. The ball in the end beats them all. But what a brilliant clearance from Finn Russell. Well, what, I mean, this, the start for Glasgow just gets better. They were a brilliant attack to get the try. And then in defence, Josh Strauss, massive hit in midfield. And they force the turnover. And then Finn Russell puts a raking kick 70, 80, 90 yards down the pitch. Brilliant kick. And from a Leicester perspective, having soaked up all those possessions, conceded the try, what did they need? They needed ball in hand, and they needed to go through the phases themselves. Unfortunately for them, second phase, they turned the ball over, the story of their European season. Gathered in by Fitzgerald. Tim Swenson, who was um, picked up by Touch Judge. Played the ball on the ground. Yeah, the four wide. Yeah. I told you, say to me, you played the ball on the ground. You played the ball on the ground. Such was his contribution against Munster last Saturday that he was the man of the match in a losing effort. You don't often see that, but he was. Silly penalty, though, just very frustrating for Gregor Towns. And all, all Ben Youngs was going to be doing there was clearing his lines and give Glasgow the line out. And playing the ground, ball on the ground is what the referee's saying. If Swinson's right in the middle there. You can see this, it's taken down by Williams and he's playing on the ground. He just, that's just a silly penalty. Again to solid Leicester line out. Freddie Burns. This is Roberts, and he's hunted down by Alex Dunbar. That's going to be ball in a very, very handy area. Coming in from Fitzgerald. We come back on the initial entry, man. Not on. Not advantage. I spoke to Gregor Townsend during the week, guys, and he was t talking about how really pleased he was with the defence last week against Munster. Yes, they lost the game, but the defence, both sides last week defensively were very strong. And you can just see there's a real intensity so far to the Warriors' defence. Any time Leicester have had it, the line-out time, and then Josh Strauss has done it, Alex Dunbar chasing down Roberts there. And you can just see there's a real intensity and bite about it. It's exactly what you want when you're coming down to a place like Welford Road. It was a really good bit of play from Dunbar, wasn't it? The decision-making in the tackle itself, so he got one hand on, pulled the man back towards, and then instead of trying to wrap his arm round, he grabs the passing arm, dislodges the ball, they get the put into the scrum. Pat from White, Ryan Wilson on the back of Gordon Reid. Gordon Reid and Set. Dan Cole, who um, enjoyed their conversations in October. Stay, stay here. Wilson having to make sure that Strauss can play with this and driven on by once more a Glasgow attack that is looking very much up for this right now. Side. Uh, yeah, but initially you're offside. Okay, and you prevent a pass. That was a planned move by Glasgow. That I thought Leicester actually read it very, very well. And I think this is a borderline penalty, actually. Yeah, because it's got to be a ruck there for him to, to be a, have an offside line. Lockie McCaffrey makes a tackle here. Is the next phase, is there a ruck here? There's no one else in. Oh, I'm not sure. There's no bind there from Ferguson, is there? So I think you're right. I think that's a tough call. Certainly Dan Cole, the look on his face. It's a tough call, either that or it's been a very fast first 12 minutes. It's been both. <laughs> it's 
being courted by others at the moment, understandably Finn Russell, but his contract isn't up until the end of next season, so he'll take some prizing away. And Glasgow, very quickly, dozen minutes gone, ten points to the good. Well, the good start for Glasgow just gets better. You know, one, one silly penalty, one knock on the base of a ruck, and that's the only mistake so far, it's been a very good 13 minutes. It's not gathered in by Lee Jones. Leonardo Sato, the scourge of Leicester in October. Yeah. For a while now with a shoulder problem. Johnny Gray, seen the role that Al Kellett left behind and now trying to lead them to uncharted waters. Russell with the long clearing kick. 11. Yeah. There is obstruction and it's Tom three. Brady who's being picked out by Matthew Reynard. Even that kick there from Finn Russell shows the attacking intent. Yes, it could be deemed a, a clearing kick as well, but it was also there for Johnny, uh, for Tommy Seymour. I think that's another harsh penalty. Not sure he did there. It's one of those where he's just leaning into him, isn't he? The referee can read that. If you're going to do that, you want to do it further away from the ball, start edging him off the ball rather than having that big step across that the referee sees. Just watch him here, just edges across. If he's guiding him off the ball from 10 metres away, the referee doesn't see that. There was a definite movement there, deviation, wasn't it? And that's where it was. It was well spotted, actually. So for Fraser Brown, in Edinburgh's Ross Ford and Stuart McAnally will be Scotland's Six Nations hookers. Line out one by Harley. He'll be part of the back row. And then Russell on the loop. Bringing in Hogg for the first time, really, in Hogg. Running with intent, tackled by Lockie McCaffrey. Great to Strauss, passed it by Fitzgerald. Most of this week talking about the physicality in their defensive line in Paris, much too passive for Brett Deak and the new defensive coaches liking. Maintaining that the physical and mental standards at times like this, standards that they just did not reach. Stab Colomier. And they're under significant pressure early on here against Glasgow as well. And once more, Finn Russell looking to tiptoe his way through. Hogg spins it wide. Look provided by Mark Bennett. Fagus. The bandmaster this time, just a little bit too much for Strauss. He was being put under pressure by Roberts. The advantage wasn't um, a long one. And this was Russell once more. And that's Brown to do the heavy work. And Strauss running into Hamilton and making a couple of metres and then earning the penalty. It's just been such an inventive start from Glasgow, please, so impressed. He just, the, the couple of phases there that just sums up Glasgow. Finn Russell takes up to the line, gets his hands free, tries to offload it, he doesn't, he's at the bottom of the ruck. Who comes in as the first receiver? Stuart John. Hogg. It's just a well-oiled machine. Gregor Towns is coaching, coming to the fore. You know, they'd, they'd be very, very pleased how they play 1-15, to 15, how they're interplay, they're understanding, they know each other's job, and they're executing it very well. We had a little brief look at it a few minutes ago, but um, let's see how things stand at the moment in the top eight. It's um, Munster and Racing kicking off at the same time as us, nil-nil. So, as we are, they will be the eight quarter-finalists. I'm sure you know how it works. First against eight, second against seventh, third against sixth, and fourth against fifth. So, at the moment, Glasgow are going to Leinster, but I dare say things will change between now and tomorrow evening. Well, I certainly think that Wasps might fancy themselves against Everett to get at least a point, move up the table slightly. It's a match that uh, you'll be able to watch with us here on BT Sport tomorrow afternoon from Parma. Connacht against Wasps. For the fourth time already in this match, Glasgow are pressing buttons inside Leicester's 22 and again they've won a penalty. So this is free ball to see what they can do with. And here's Jones sliding away from the attempted tackle of Tate. 
Russell. Driven forward by Fagerson, and it takes Cole and McCaffrey all their might to hold him up. Again, it's Brown, who's no advantage. We come back to away. the infringement. It's collapsing of the mall. Collapsing the mall. Glasgow doing their best to keep the ball at the back, away from the Leicester players. Just need to be a little bit careful with those new laws that they transfer the ball and the ball carrier doesn't move backwards. Tom, be careful. There is two They're just moving backwards with okay. the ball. And, uh, uh, Under the new laws, that could have been deemed a penalty to Leicester, okay. but certainly Ed Slater pulling them all over after that transfer wasn't made. No quarter-final place to play for for Tom Youngs and Co. But they're still defending an enviable home record here. Welford Road still very much a continental castle that's it's rarely breached. Lost just one of their last 33 European games here over a 10-year stretch. Ulster, the last visitors to go away with the spoils three years ago. There's every possibility here. Quarter of the way through the match for the Warriors to build a 13-point advantage. Oh. Oh. That's a bad miss. And uh, the first significant blot on Glasgow's landscape. They still lead by 10 points to nil, however. They'd be fully good, well worth the 13 points. They've dominated the first 20 minutes here. And you've got to keep the scoreboard ticking over because inevitably Leicester will come back into this. They always do, especially here at Welford Road. Come on. up towards halfway again Russell in the center of things once more it's Hogg and again Jones there finding some profit on this left hand side was that obstruction all might yet work for Hogg Matthew Tate was um, the man interfering perhaps with Lee Jones came off yeah touch touches up he's got this yeah. Okay. As your French boys, well, they they, uh, they reckon there was a change of position. He, uh, Can we check about uh, his the potential obstruction? After the coup de pied, straight after the kick, please. Can we check about the potential obstruction? Est-ce qu'on peut contrôler s'il n'y a pas une obstruction après le coup de pied? Potential obstruction by the number 15 green. Tate doesn't have to get out of the way, but and he can't switch lanes. He's entitled to chase back, but he can't step into the mat. It's, oh, it's borderline, isn't it? Son épaule. Son épaule gauche. He uses. Uh, the question is, can Jones stay on his feet? Shoulder. On no, a we little have bit of a nudge angle. there. Okay. We have so step this across. Angle is better. There and he just keeps going, yes, doesn't he? he? It's worse in slow motion, but it's probably a penalty. That looks like a penalty in that angle there, doesn't it? They are all the angles. Thank you, they are all the angles. Thank you. I have a decision, Philip. Yes. So for me, there is a, a, a clear obstruction about the number 15. Correct. So it will be penalty kick and a yellow card about the, uh, against the number 15. I agree. Okay. Yeah, hey, Philip, for the point of shoot, you have well, the evening may get better for Leicester, but at the moment yeah, it's, it's uh, showing no signs of it. For me, there is a, a kick and a good opportunity for the other team. It's okay. it's yeah, but he, he, used, he changed his line and he used the shoulder. That's your opinion, not mine. Okay, but I'm the ref. If you want, we, we can change. Okay? <laughs> Very good ref, in, in, in his communication. And it's the right call. It's the right call. Okay. Matthew takes first. Okay. Yellow card for okay. eight years. If he makes that decision that it's a penalty for stepping across, it's a cynical bit of play that he's accusing Matthew Tate of. It's a yellow card, it's a potential try scoring opportunity. It's not a probable one, which is why it's not a penalty try. But he's absolutely right with his handling of it. 
it is an interesting thing because it's a because it was a, a, a char, um, you know a late tackle. And it's where the ball lands. It goes in in 15, and you can see that just the angle there. But Glasgow kicked to the corner rather than the three points. in by Swinson. It's another penalty for taking the player out in the air. Stop! Stop, stop, boys! No, that's fine. Just go back to that penalty. You know, it might tell you something about the confidence that Glasgow yeah. have about taking him over. It might tell you something about Finn Russell's maybe lack of confidence goal kicking, having missed Turn the off. previous one. Because in a game that they just need to win... Captain, please. No, yeah, but... Uh, uh, that was the, it. Oh. Tom, Tom, can I speak, please? Yeah. There, there is a clear infringement uh, uh, on the jumper, OK? Straight after that, I whistle. After whistle, it's finished. Yes. Keep the control officer, so it's just a rugby game, nothing more, yes. OK? Yeah. Thank you. Penalty kick here. So there's, there's the same the choice here. again, Ben. It's bang, bang on the 15. This, I, I think they have to go for three points. There's a big Thank discussion, you. isn't okay. there? They're going Easy for the please. corner by the looks of things. Yes. They are. Fraser Brown. Warriors with the attacking lineup grabbed out of the night sky by Rob Harley. Kept it off the floor. And they're still That's heading in the right direction. It's a penalty try. Oh my goodness, what a start to Leicester's evening. What a start to Glasgow's. They've scored two tries in the opening quarter of the match. Tommy Seymour. And now a penalty try from a driving ball that referee Matthew Reynolds was convinced was going to end up as a try. It was an early call, wasn't it? But I'll tell you, Glasgow's decision to go for the corner was totally vindicated. It was the momentum, the speed that that was going forward, Ben, I think has influenced the referee's decision to make it a penalty try. It's flying in from the outside. There were Leicester players behind. Could you say it probably would have been scored? The referee obviously thinks so. No hesitation in his mind at all. When you were saying about the decision to go for the corner, it's easy with hindsight to say, well, it's the right decision. But I just think that Glasgow probably took the opinion that three points, is that going to make any difference at the end of the game? We can put a final nail in the coffin psychologically to Leicester here if we take them over. It's a brave, courageous, but ultimately brilliant decision to go for that from Johnny Gray. I mean, we said it's been a good start, Nick. This is way beyond any expectations I think that Gregor Townsend would have had, but they've, they've fully deserved it. It's not like it's been luck or interception. No, they've completely dominated this game. Freddie Burns goes along with the restart into the arms of Jones, who helped set up that position. He was the one obstructed by Matt Tate. Just the work of Strauss, every time he carries the ball, he gets those extra two, three metres. We saw when he hit the floor, got back to his feet, drove on again. That made other players from the defensive line for Leicester step in, and that created the overlap on the outside, which we saw the kick into the corner. Matt takes Simbening with him. Without those extra few metres, Leicester have numbers out there, they solve the problem. by Ed Slater to himself, under pressure from Gray. Burns. Oh, it's been charged down by Russell. Burns wanting more time than he had. Jack Roberts was the first to fall on the ball. Great for the, for the fly half, he gets a bit of clearance this time to Jones and you know, Hogg. And again, presses the accelerator. Working really hard over the ball. It's the kind of physicality and temperament Eddie Jones was saying yesterday that's earned him a place in the England squad ahead of the Six Nations, although he's not been back to his best so far this season. The broken arm hasn't helped, but that was much more like it from Mike Williams. Yeah, he just got in a very good position, and not even Josh Strauss, big man himself, and Fraser Brown could dislodge him. Eddie Jones yesterday said that he's taking a punt. 
including him in the Six Nations squad. Clearly not a great deal this season that would suggest he's ready to play Test Match Rugby at the moment, but it's what he's seen previously and moments like that that have lodged in his memory banks. And that, that's what Eddie Jones has brought to this. He's got absolute clarity of what he's looking for from each position. And Aaron Major for good news goes on. Well, again, it's another psychological blow for Leicester, isn't it? I think here's an opportunity. We've not been in the game. Nibble away at that lead. And then you think, well, even our kicker's not on form to get us those points when we when we do finally get an attacking opportunity. Lost forward by Seymour. Leicester with the advantage, right. and Hamilton seeing what they can do with it. Uh, on the play on the ground. It's just his second European start tonight, Luke Hamilton arrived this season. Oh. In interesting, um, the last couple of minutes there from Glasgow, they, they, an outstanding start. You just can't let their discipline drop a wee bit. They, they, they think maybe with a 17-point lead you can go after a ball in the in the in the contact and the tackle. Tim Swinson thought he was entitled to. We know it's a fine line between getting on the ball and, and being too late and giving away a penalty. But yeah, they've had a great start. They don't want to just let it drop now. Freddie Burns, who was the scorer of Leicester's last European try. Here against Racing in October, over four and a half hours ago now. But a half I don't know how we're going to play that back now here. anyway. Thank you. The wait goes on. And on. And on. There's an uneasy feeling around Welford Road, isn't there? The crowd not happy. There's a just despondency and there's nothing happening. Hogs restart. It was underneath it and he gets cut out of the way by Ryan Wilson. Less the ball to work with though and Slater fit to start tonight after he left us with a tight calf in Paris last weekend at half time. Cole bowls over the 10 metre line. Pulls loose and Young's needed to be on it quickly. And now Beetham runs towards us before he starts to bend into the left, but he gave the ball away. And the chase for Bennett. And Hall is not far away, and Burns is under a lot of pressure. And Braid is there, and Leicester, still a reminder, operating without their fullback, Matthew Tate. Meters. Once more, it's Hogg. And he tries amongst those doing what he could to protect the ball. So Gordon Reed has to act as scrum half. Tries is back in his usual role now. This is Fagerson. 90 seconds to go on the tape yellow. Reed once more fancies the opportunity to open his lungs. Swinson does well to find Russell, and Russell's nearly through. Once Massive again. overlap left, Nick. Strauss and Jones cuts back inside, and the try will be scored by Bennett. And the Warriors have three within half an hour, and they're flying towards the last eight. Probably. Glasgow's best ever 30 minutes of rugby. It's been unbelievable. Everything they've done has been with real accuracy, real intent. Ali Price is a brilliant start. Gordon Reid to look how comfortable Glasgow are with ball in hand, offloading to Finn Russell. If he'd come here left, then it was on there, wasn't it, Ben? But then they didn't, they didn't throw it away. Josh Strauss 
to Ryan Wilson eventually. Nice pass to Mark Bennett. Great finish. What a start by Glasgow. Just needed straightening up at the end, didn't it, here? And that just means that everyone can't continue their drift across from a Leicester perspective. Just gives enough room on the outside. But actually probably made right at the start of that. There's an old defensive coach adage that if you send two men into it, the ball carrier, you have to stop the offload. Leicester sent three, sent three and still got the ball away. It caused all their problems. And from a, a questioning angle, the conversion from Finn Russell. And Gregor Townsend and Matt Taylor next to him will be thrilled with what they're seeing. Well, Nick, I spoke to Gregor during the week and he said one of the big disappointments last week was they weren't able to bring their game to the game last week against Munster. Munster just stifled them and it was a very, you know, attrition. I see, he, he was desperate for Glasgow to bring their game to Welford Road well. In the first 30 minutes we have seen Glasgow Warriors bring their A game and it's been too good for Leicester. Matthew Tate was away serving his 10 minutes in the bin. The Warriors scored two tries. Hamilton. If it was about repairing damaged pride before the match. What's it about now for Leicester? Here's Tate again. Ball went backwards. Touch George on this near side. Thomas Dejon. Tackle! Tackle! Oh, oh. Again to Hamilton, who's working as hard as anyone, ball in hand from a Leicester perspective. Leicester at the moment, they're working with a, a quarter of the ball. the most faces so far and Roberts gets the ball away just as he gets the big hit from Jones but it doesn't stop their forward momentum and the inside centers quickly back on his feet ball was spilt by Young but no long-term harm done Jimmy Gray was there digging away for the Warriors and here's Bateman and good progress Burns and McCaffrey Hauled down by Wilson. And the attacking threat stopped by Ryan Wilson. You know, Nick, what, what sums up Glasgow's almost utter domination of this game is that Ben Youngs, we've hardly mentioned in commentary, we've hardly seen him do anything. He's one of my favourite scrum masters. I think he's a brilliant scrum master. He had a fantastic autumn series. But when you don't have a platform and you don't have the ball, you can't do anything. This is where, look, here's Glasgow going again. They're off again, taking a quick penalty. To Russell, names that we've mentioned plenty of times over the first half an hour. Once again, here's Hogg. Lee Price thought about popping the ball up for Jones, thought better of it. Ferguson crying for it, and Swinton held up. Strauss, taking Dunbar into the equation. Started all three autumn tests. Oh. Ian Bennett in Vern Cotters. Extended 37 this week. Bennett amongst the tries this evening. And Gray once more to Swinson. It's the movement on. moving on to the ball at pace. Nothing static about what Glasgow are doing at the moment. And again, it's Bennett breaking through. That seemed to skim off the fingers of Lee Jones. Bateman, First European Cup start for him. First start in seven weeks in any competition for Leicester's loose head tonight in the absence of Marcus Ajertza and Molapola. And um, on the list of great clearances, that's not one of Ben Young's best. It's just, it's been so impressive how comfortable every single Glasgow Warriors player has been on the ball. Yeah. Every time you know, Gordon Reid went through for the, to set up Mark Bennett's try, Xander Fagerson's been 
offloading. You've got Tim Swinson coming off great angles. It's just brilliant, brilliant sort of full play from everyone. Now, there's um, another match going on in this pool in Pool 1. Munster Racing kicked off at the same time, Ben. Yeah, it's nil-nil at the moment. Munster need a win to guarantee a top-four place. Stander on the break, yeah, gets through. Panic in the Racing defence, and Dambiele, the number 10, just comes into shot now. Blatantly, round the corner, under pressure, referee's got no option but to yellow card him. Still nil, nil, so um, Munster, who are sure of topping this pool, pool one. Get him in, get him in, we want to play. Get him in. That's twice. Johnny, that's twice. Home quarter final. Glasgow okay. currently 15, 18 points and very well placed if things stay as they are. Five minutes to half time and already looking for a bonus point securing fourth try. Bennett again linking with Dunbar. And that's brilliantly done and Gray will score the fourth try. They have unstitched Leicester from the start of this match to the 35th minute. They've got four tries. Any doubt that Glasgow will be European quarter-finalists this season is ending here and now. They're romping away with it. This is fancy rugby. This is off the Xbox at the moment. Everything they do is execution. is absolutely brilliant. The understanding of Ali Price, what he's doing there to Lee Jones, to Johnny Gray, off the back of a line-out that Alex Dunbar's taken up. Look at this. There's no way you can defend that when you're coming from the blind side. And then it's Johnny Gray off the shoulder. It's unstoppable. As you said, almost a carbon copy of the earlier try. Coming round the corner, second row outside him. But the winger on that deep line, hidden in behind the breakdown, just waiting for the Leicester forwards to step out of the line to tackle. We've not reached half time yet. It's just 70% possession. Glasgow 31 0 against Leicester. It is, it's been incredible. And then it's been, it's nothing less than they deserve. It's been a, it, the execution has been outstanding. What has been good is, unlike last week, where Leicester said themselves that defensively their line speed wasn't good enough, the physicality from Leicester's defence has been good. But it hasn't panicked Glasgow, they've just made the right decisions, they've taken the hits when they're on offer, they've driven through the contact, even though that line speed's there, they've been outstanding. And again, the Warriors are, are up and running with Ferguson. Russell. Harley. To Ryan Wilson. from Finn Russell now so much confidence in everything they're doing. Advantage over for Knockon. Hog. Look at his influence from the fullback. Most of his surges have been significant surges and this is Brown. Gordon Reed. Century of games for Warriors in that first game at Scotsdale. As you play out to reload Strauss when they get off at himself, but also tried to use him as the dummy, but it wasn't taken by Cole or by Hamilton. And now here goes the hooker. Oh, that's brilliantly accelerated onto by Bennett. What a game he's having as well. Gloucester's Matt Scott might be back in the Six Nations squad, but he's going to have to work hard for his Don't test go. match place. And the bounce of the ball again goes the Warriors' way. 
Ben, I never thought I'd say this here at Welford Road against Leicester, but it's almost like a training ground. Glasgow just going through phase after phase, almost bringing everything out of their repertoire, everything that they've practiced, they're trying to bring on, they're bringing on to the, the match ground here. It's well, astonishing usually in to watch. these circumstances, as the away team, you'd be under a bit of pressure, wouldn't you? Now all that pressure's gone, they can afford just to throw it about, like you said, it almost... It's becoming fun for them, you know, a bit of fun, throw the ball around, if we knock it on it doesn't matter, we've got that cushion. It might be fun for Glasgow, it is very much not fun for the majority of those inside Welford Road. One stop! Indeed for the players down there on the pitch. Once more taken to the cleaners by Glasgow. Oh, hard to come. Pirouettes doesn't find touch. And there's one okay, more tied to repel as Tommy Seymour brings it forward. He's going with the opening try. Glasgow's top try scorer this season. It's swept up by Reed. Slater trying to do what he can to slow things down, but it's still Warriors ball, and again it's Strauss. <laughs> Seymour, drop goal here, we're just about to put the tin lid on it. And it drifts away to the left-hand side. Been coming to Welford Road for the best part of 40 years. I cannot remember a more gruesome Tigers first 40 than that for the Warriors poetry and they can book the tickets already for the quarterfinals what a half of rugby for the scots leicester nil glasgow 31. Well, Gloucester were, uh, Glasgow were hoping to pick up at least a bonus point. They've got a bonus point for four tries. Goodness knows what is being said at the moment in that Leicester dressing room. They have been blown away. They haven't scored a point, and Glasgow Warriors are playing like Warriors. They've rattled up 31 points of their own, and that is just at half-time. This is how the top ten stands at the moment. Claremont, they are guaranteed number one seeding. Saracens have strengthened their place for a home quarter-final with their win over Toulon. Look at your team, pick out where they are, but Glasgow have moved into the quarter-final places. Andy Nicholl, phenomenal. Four tries, bonus point before half-time. Let's have a look at them and enjoy them, because what control from Glasgow? It's been an unbelievable performance from the very outset. Tommy Seymour finishes this off with brilliant flexibility. Ali Price controlled it. This is then the forwards. They've been there. They've been a, a one penalty just before this. I thought the referee went very quickly here to a penalty try, but it, I think it was because of the momentum that Glasgow were going over the line there. He said it was it was brought down. That was that was beyond Wilder's dreams with two tries gone. But this is then Ryan Wilson to Mark Bennett finishes it off. And it was just all the, the intensity and the desire to play base has been outstanding. And that last try, the execution was just exquisite. It's been an amazing 40 minutes. We love using the phrase champagne rugby. I don't know where this iron brew rugby are in Scotland, but they are playing with such confidence. You question whether they should be going for the points by kicking the penalty goals and they get the penalty try. Where's this confidence coming from so early in the game? Well, you know, I did speak to Gregor Townsend during the week and he was actually really pleased with the performance last week, albeit in defeat. The intensity was there, defence was there. And what they wanted to do was bring their game, their attacking game. And we've seen it. And for me, he was 31-0. And Leicester have almost been powerless to stop it, Martin. It's not, it's not like they've fallen off tackles. They're just not getting close to them because the attacking intent is there. From 1 to 15, Gordon Reid, Xander Fagerson, Tim Swinson, who's been outstanding has given the platform but it's the way that they've they've wanted to offload it and it's just been outstanding from one to finish from first minute to last it's breathless stuff what do they do in the second half I mean, they're going to want to keep going aren't they well the, the confidence is just chorus going through this team they'll just come out and want to do exactly the same well we shall wait and see it is thrilling stuff miserable stuff if you're a leicester tigers fan but you've got to have some respect for this glasgow warriors team they are simply outstanding gregor townsend will be urging his men more of that please they lead 31 nil can they build on that we'll find out in the second half just a few moments away
Tommy Seymour, Mark Bennett, Johnny Gray, penalty try. They've all appeared on the score sheet for Glasgow Warriors. It means they have a 31-0 lead over the Leicester Tigers at halftime here at Welford Road. They've got their bonus point. They are heading for victory. What about these names? Noel, Watson, Itoji. They all made their name in the Anglo-Welsh. The Anglo-Welsh returns next week. We've got two local derbies for you. Bath against Gloucester, Friday, 7.30 on BT Sport 2. And then Leicester Tigers against the Northampton Saints here from Welford Road at Saturday, 2.45 on BT Sport 1. Both those matches on 4K UHD. But let's concentrate on the here and now. Leicester Tigers have got to concentrate on the here and now or they face an almighty humbling. They're down. Zip. 31 against the Glasgow Warriors. Time to head back to our commentary team. Andy Nicol, Ben Kay, and Nick Mullins. Well, we have quite rightly been singing Glasgow's praises to the heavens, but a word about Leicester. We've been trawling back through the record books at half time, and we've got big, thick, chunky ones. Tim, our stats man, um, loves to be set a challenge. Uh, have they ever had a worse 40 minutes was the question, uh, and he's yet to come back with one that was worse than that here at Welford Road. They were hammered by Munster in December, their record European defeat. Saracen's got 50 points here over the piece in the Premiership in September 2011. But as first half goes, I think it's probably safe to say that points-wise, that's as bad as it's ever been in Leicester's long and illustrious history, which tells you everything about how well Glasgow have played. Leicester, it doesn't need me to tell you, are heading for a record defeat here in so many ways, unless they can pull their fingers out collectively over what's left of this match, okay, the stop, remaining stop, 40 minutes. And here's Josh Strauss, one of those who had a, a gargantuan first half for Glasgow. And again, he spits and bristles his way over the 10-metre line, and again, another penalty conceded by Leicester. Eight now in the match so far. Just struggling to do with the physicality of it all at the breakdown, doing what they doing what they can. Ben, I talked to Aaron Major in the week leading up to this, and he said, we've just got to walk the talk. It's all right talking about it at the training ground, in the players' room during the week, but this is where it really matters. I think the concern for me is the fact that we said before the game, Glasgow are going to come here, want to play, turn it into the sort of game that we saw when the game was a home game for them. And yet early on we saw Leicester trying to match Glasgow by going wide. Leicester have got a lot of injury in their backs, they've got to play to their strengths and they're not doing that, they didn't do that early on. They let the game open up in the first five minutes. Glasgow had that 27 phase hit up before they scored the try and suddenly they're comfortable in the environment of Welford Road. by those in his masks. And the hero falls just short. And in a shake of the head, that um, he was knocking them over from halfway in the warm-up. It's a shorter pitch here at Welford Road, and Russell knows that he under-clubbed that one. Uh, and that um, error is compounded by another Glasgow one. Just go back to your point there, Ben. You saw the blueprint last week of how to play against Glasgow. Munster just stifled them and just, uh, you know, made a really intense, they're really physical in the breakdown. And they've just not been able to get close to the ball, dislodge the tackle. Glasgow have just got in behind, out wide so often. But when you've got such a tackle intent from 1 to 15, it's really tough, isn't it? Yeah. Glasgow have been absolutely brilliant. Nine. On the other hand, Leicester have not. Seven. Score that we have at the moment. Top left. Still not hooked back cleanly, so um, they, they, they give here. it another go. Tom Youngs, and under a lot of pressure, they do well to rescue that to resuscitate it in the end. Taken on by Peter Beetham. Australian amongst the bunch who recently extended their contracts here at Welford Road and Fitzgerald tries to find some momentum. And this is Slater. Oh, and Tom Youngs okay. loses it. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to change the course of the match, Ben. He, he is. And Ben Youngs 
on the front foot looks so much better, but his passing from the base has got to be more accurate. He nearly makes Mike Williams drop the ball when Mike Williams is running at full tilt. If you're the forward running at full tilt, you need the ball in your bread basket. You don't need it behind you when you're clattering into the collision. Now, he might have seen his brother late there, but if he is, he's, got to, he's not going to give it to him. He's got to make the decision, no, I can't give you an accurate pass, rather than just try and shuffle it on. Tim Cocker has um, been trying to pick up what he can from the Leicester dressing room at half-time. What kind of things have you been hearing, Tim? Murphy, Jordan Murphy, yeah, thanks, Nick, said that the Leicester coaches are telling their players to focus first and foremost on possession. They're not controlling their own attacking breakdown. Jordan Murphy accepted that. He did say he was slightly frustrated they weren't getting the rub of the green with the officiating on that front, but denying Glasgow possession and then controlling things from their point of view, definitely the focus for Leicester. Thank you, Tim. Brett Deacon this week, Ben, reflecting more what they did in Paris last weekend, was talking about that, protecting the ball when they go into contact. And it's, it is, it's just a technical thing, it's the basic thing of having the ball in the right position so you have it once well, you've been is, tackled. My last point about that pass from uh, Ben Youngs controls that, because if you're taking the ball behind you, you're not going to win that collision, it's not on your terms. The players want to be winning the collision on their terms, a long place back so it's away from the opposition, and suddenly you've got quick ball. And then just to, to prove the point, in the first half, Ali Price, his passing was going in front of the player, and he was taking the contact on their terms. And that's, you might think it's a, people might be watching and think it's a small thing, but it's a massive thing, and it's been a huge difference. There's also an element to Glasgow that, that they had that flow, they almost knew what each other were doing, and it's much easier, as soon as you start hesitating, that's when you get the problems of a pass not quite going to hand because someone overruns you. It's just that lack of confidence from Leicester. Glasgow, supremely confident. Focus on it, yeah. I try to do mine, I hope. Well, the only folk not entirely happy with the scoreline at the moment are those who have uh, fetish Loretonians in their heart. You'll remember we talked about them at the start of the game. Christmas 1905, when the boys won 3-0 here, 111 years since, and uh, Glasgow um, seemingly on course to become space, the next please. Scottish side, 111 okay. years later, to win at Welford Road. I think just to, to um, in case any Fatigians are a bit angry, it's Fatigians, Loratorians, which is the, the former players of both. And here we go with Wilson. And then taken on by Brown, and they're hunting down a fifth score. And here's Swinson. Price goes the other way and then straightens it up himself. Riding the tackle of McCaffrey and Brown. Finn Russell calling for it on this right-hand side. He knew what was happening and Seymour gathers it high above his head rather slowed him down and gave Leicester the opportunity to get the defence around. Gray waits, but it's taken on by Fagerson, who busts through the door, but not over the doorstep. Leicester's defence just about holding on. They're playing the advantage. Gordon Reid has it. And now Wilson, and now they do have the fifth score. too easy it's just it, the contrast when Leicester when we were down the other end when Leicester were attacking there was just they were attacking in ones and twos and it seemed a bit half-hearted down the other end it's just like it's like press a fast forward button they're just so good and look at it, what a well worked well drilled line out there they're trying everything they're getting everything out of the practice Ben and it's all going to hand and it's all working and you get the end here lots of offload missed tackle that just sums up the game so far yeah, Leicester switching off at their line-out defence, causes all the problems, five metres out. Glasgow supremely confident, they're just going to keep banging against that door until they go through it. You have to keep them out of your red zone. And switching off at the line-out, allowing the scrum half who stood there just to free run down that ten-metre line. Ryan Wilson's first ever European try is converted by Finn Russell and the faces might not show it but 
Leicester nil, Glasgow 38 tells its own story. And here was try number five. Is loose. Beatham gathers it, throws it back inside. Must have just been unable to build any kind of phase play in this area in Glasgow's 22. Just one phase over the course of the match so far. <laughs> they're going to have to wait a little bit longer. It's, it's astonishing stuff. There's, there's just so many. 72% possession still that Glasgow have. You know, 38 nil. You know, Nick, I've come in many years of my career, but Bath and Glasgow, and you know. I, I just cannot believe what I'm watching. It's, it's been great to see, but it's also sad from a Leicester perspective because they're on a the shadow line, of, uh, of what this line. club's been over the years. Green, on the line, please. No. Why? On the line, please. On the line. line-out pod Slater at the back calling it again to himself but it was a little bit too high and it wasn't straight either and Tom Youngs goes down on his haunches and what a test of everybody's character this is in a Leicester shirt right now and changes are, are being made Ellis Gen just coming on to um, offer his special kind of determination and it's a fairly rueful Greg Bateman who makes way and also Ben Young sees um, away from the club for a while now he's off to meet up with England ahead of the Six Nations it'll be um, a couple of months before he can do anything to try and redress the balance from a Leicester perspective as Sam Harrison takes his place that'll be the, the, the toughest 50 minutes Ben Young's has ever had here at Welford Road he's hardly touched the ball in the front foot he's been under pressure when he's been kicking he's had to defend a lot it's just been a horrible 50 minutes for him he'll be he'll be desperate okay, to get to the England camp quite frankly Okay. Oh, that. And his next okay. game for Leicester will be his 199th. He's speaking just my call. Yeah. He will try okay. to raise the 198 from his memory as quickly as he can, but it'll be a long wait before that 199th. Here's a start that just sums up how the game's gone. Ali Price is opposite number is at seven carries at the same time that Ben Young's at zero. And that just that just sums up which team was on the front foot and enjoying which scrum half has enjoyed the armchair ride, which normally never happens to the opposition scrum half here at Welford Road. Scrum with the um, ironing board flat. Russell goes through a giant-sized hole and Brady's coming across to try and stop him. And, uh, Hogg doing what he could, but in the end was all too much for Lee Jones to try and sort out. No! A penalty from the situation yeah. that was set up by Russell's burst. Well, that, that play, play almost sums up Finn Russell as well. Just mercurial, what a talent, goes through goes through a gap as if nobody's there and then throws a pass to nobody. I have to say, he reminds me of uh, his coach in his heyday, Mr Townsend, who used to do similar things. And it's, But I just love the confidence that he, go, he goes, watch it, he comes through this gap, look at the amount of, look at the... the support runs that Stuart Hogg's giving he comes through here he's any number of people to throw the ball to and he throws it to the grass but it just sums up Finn Ross he's brilliant but he makes mistakes but what a talent he's going to be masterminding Scotland's threat during the Six Nations picks out Rod Harley more Glasgow games than anybody else in this squad will be enjoying this as much as anybody. Price got that away under some pressure. Might yet work. No, it won't. Hogg loses it. Ben, um, what's happening at Toman Park? Well, uh, high tackle from Nakarawa on Blay Anderthal. He steps up, recovers from the tackle. No leave, yellow card shown leave, for it leave, or uh, any further sanction. It was quite a debatable one. Yeah, but no real damage done. Munster now out to 10-3. Just a reminder, they need a win to guarantee their top four status. So here, stay left, left and left, OK? It's Munster and wrestling in this pool, in pool one, kicked off at the same oh, time as us. Um, and right now, Munster will be back at 
Tomen Park in the quarterfinals, and Glasgow will be part of that last eight. What's misleading about that, Nick, is that the Cornet sitting in fifth look comfortable, but they know if they lose them to lose, to lose tomorrow, and Wasp beat Zebra, which we think they're going to do, okay. Cornet can go from fifth to being out of it completely, which is astonishing. Just proves how exciting the Champions Cup is. Stop. Time off. We got, we got a concern, OK? We need to solve it, OK? We are, no, no, that's fine. I speak, please. So I speak, OK? So we've got good, good scrum until now. We need to continue. Leave him a space and longest bind. I don't want to bind on the elbow, OK? No, that's fine. End, end of discussion. Come on. Changes preparing to be made. Here, please. Yesterday, that uh, WP Nell will miss Rush. the entire Six Nations with his neck injury that he hurt against Harlequins Nine. last Saturday. So that man, Xander Fagerson, Seven. will once again step into the breach as he did so well in the autumn. Yeah, he did very well in the autumn, but that's a big loss for Scotland and possibly the Lions. Nell's an outstanding player. Yes, no, no, no. Yeah, um, that old is he? On the ground. Under Ferguson, is he 21? And Mester from that penalty clear away. Now, Ben, another try uh, in Monster. Yeah, Tom and Park going wild. Tommy O'Donnell hits the ball up. Forwards come round the corner, act as the decoy. Conor Murray puts it behind, they play in the backfield. And Ronan Omani on the wing. A grateful recipient does well to finish it, and that try, as it stands, puts Munster ahead of Saracens in the table. Saracens who um, beat Toulon 10 3 at Allianz Park before we kicked off here, and all in the hands of the new scrum half. You've seen him come on, Henry Pergos, who uh, is. It again. Back in a Warriors jersey. So confirmation of what Ben was saying, and how that affects the top eight. Look at Monster now; they're up to second. Um, doesn't really affect whether Monster or Saracens will get home quarterfinals, but it will affect who they play in those quarterfinals. No, there's no places there that you would choose to go in the top four, would you? <laughs> Munster, Leinster, Claremont or Saris. Taken by Gray under some attention from Fitzgerald. The ball has been stolen by Fitzgerald. He's doing what he can to try and steady this ship. McCaffrey. Tom Croft was part of Leicester's warm-up routine before the match, so it won't be long before we see him back in combat. Here goes Russell again. Being chased down by Roberts, hunted by Roberts, and Leicester have worked well there to gum Glasgow back in their own 22. How many do they have wide now? Beetham comes across to make sure that there's no further progress made by Bennett. is Reed. Pergos. Not so long ago, Henry Pergos was the nailed on first choice number one scrum half for the Warriors, but Henry Price started to make his move. He's got a lovely flat pass though. Pergos, it just flew into the arms of Finn Russell. Gave the fly half plenty of time to execute the kick. Yes. Lots of those phases there just uh, showed a different a different side to Johnny Gray, who Johnny Gray is just phenomenal work the, the tackle and his carries. But he put two passes there, one missed pass, but it was an absolutely the right decision to, to go wide outside the defence, and then another offload there as well as then the next time he got it, he took it forward. He's growing into the role as captain, I hear. He's very good, he's a leader by example, but his work rate is just phenomenal. It's becoming an impossible set of circumstances for Warren Gatland and the Lions, isn't it? You've got Johnny Gray, Alan Wynne Jones, a lot of people tipping to be the captain. Itoji, Cruz, Launchbury up in there. Then you've got 
Toner. Alan Toner. Yeah. Maybe Henderson as well. It's just an embarrassment of riches whittling them down. And, and his big brother as well, remember? Yeah. <laughs> his work rate is just phenomenal, though, isn't it? Well, you, you normally get players who are of a great work rate in defence no, or no. attack. But he does both. He tops the charts on tackles and carries almost on a weekly basis, which is unheard of. Fraser Brown replaced by Pat McCarthy. That's a pat on the back from Kenny Murray. Glasgow's backs coach, Dan McFarland, looks after the forwards. And that's brilliantly taken by Wilson. And once again, not messing around to keep those hands warm. Pergos. His foot on the accelerator and it's pressed by Russell and then the break from Hogg. And he just managed to keep the ball live, or did he? No, he didn't. I think he just uh, left arm oh, almost got no, tackled no, 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 into no, no, touch. No. But yet again, Glasgow just so easy to get outside the defence and then in behind. But again, it only comes from good angles, good accuracy of pass. You know, the ball's in front all the time, they're not slowing down at any time, they're just getting in behind them almost at will. Ian Finn Russell's so good on that outside arc, isn't he? Two touch, ten, gives it, likes to get it back as he runs round the corner, and then he's got that pace to accelerate. And if he's got centers who are prepared to run hard and tight, gives him that opportunity to get outside a defender that's rocked back onto his heels. Took too long. At the line out, so we'll um, take the scrum. Let's have a chat with Gregor Townsend. Left left, uh, what was the message at half time, Gregor, leading left as you were 31 0? Yeah, well, we tried to focus on, on detail, things that um, we needed to do better, um, things that and maybe they the defence. There can't be that many. <laughs> there were, well, there was a lot of emotion, obviously, the, the players are full of energy, they couldn't wait to start the second half. and. It's been great to see the execution of uh, the plays that they've worked this week. Um, a lot of them have led to, to breaks. Um, we just need to keep, keep, keep the effort and focus up to, because this would be a special day if we can keep playing like this. You had a better 40 minutes than that first 40. Okay, boys. Um, probably not in terms of the, the context of the game. I think the, the first half um, and the Pro 12 final against Munster was, was pretty good too. So. The, the equal of that, I think the fact that we kept hold of possession so well when, when Leicester were challenging for a ball at the breakdown um, and went through a number of phases, uh, that took its toll on the defence. Good man, Gregor, we'll let you get back to your job, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think the only thing they could work on getting better was the try celebrations at half time, that was all. Having a practice at that. Advantage. With the advantage, and looking for half a dozen tries now, and... Taken on by Seymour, who started it all. Pergos, Russell snaps it back. Fagerson provided the link. And then Bennett goes around the outside. He's eventually lassoed by Jack Roberts, but picked up by Pergos again. And then taken on by Pat MacArthur, who's only just come on, the new hooker. for the line and score it. And it's Tim Swinson. And Glasgow at Welford Road have six tries. Half a dozen tries at Welford Road. It's 43 nil. Astonishing. Astonishing, but Tim Swinson there fully deserved. He's been outstanding. You know, in amongst all the great attacking play out wide, Tim Swinson's done an awful lot of carries. You look at the confidence, Henry Perkins knows that somebody's going to be inside him, it's Pat MacArthur, and then just here's the grunt work, and it's the, it's the second effort, the tackle, and then he's gone again, and uh, the tackle's never going to be strong enough. There he is, just on the white line. Well, two of Leicester's theoretically most powerful players in Ellis Genge and Mike Williams. Double tackle him, and he still bounces through and has the momentum to slide over the line. And as you said, his work rate's been great carrying the amount of times he's been the decoy runner. Still got smashed by the defender. And 
McGregor talking about areas that might be tightened up going forward. And off the tee. Finn Russell hasn't been at his best tonight, but it really hasn't mattered because in every other aspect of their game, Glasgow have been supreme. Substitution is completed. Time off. Wait, wait, wait. And it's a performance that has tested the patience of wait, wait, wait. some of the locals up to and beyond breaking point. They're off to spend their Saturday evening elsewhere. It's now getting to one of these stages, isn't it? It could almost just derail the whole season and it can knock on effect back in the Viva Premiership because you know they're, they're in the mix there and something like devastating as this and there's still 17 and a half minutes to go if this gets over 50 you know there's, there's sometimes it can be devastating kind of thing oh, 100 percent i'm struggling to think of a lower point in tiger's history than this you know yes you've had big losses away from home but i can't remember leicester in a game that had Nothing riding on it from a qualification point of view, but a lot riding on it in terms of pride capitulating at home like this before. It's not for Leicester positives. It's great to see Don Barrow back on the pitch. And he's taken the place of Mike Williams. Welcome return. First game since he injured his head against Racing back in October in the Champions Cup. Slater, gritted teeth, still all determination. And again from eight, Hamilton. And uh, new scrum half as well is Sam Harrison being with us for a while now. And just look at the energy in the Glasgow defence. They're so excited by it. They know that they're living off the adrenaline of possibly one of the greatest games they've ever that Glasgow have ever played away from home in Europe, dominating a team supposedly with history. And Glasgow have been absolutely superb. And look at that line speed again. Not just the back rowers. Look Don't at the work of the likes of Ferguson flying out of the line. Still at 63 minutes when sometimes you see props replaced. He's full of energy. Harry Thacker was um, the Leicester player. Snaffled initially and um, the ball was lost Time forward. And Mathieu Reynard wants to have a look at something. Hey, Mathieu. I just, I just want to check the, the full play. There is a tackle after pass about the number 10 white but i don't see clearly uh, the action can we check again please yes tackle after pass by the 10 oh, tackle after white. pass about the 10 white tm philippe bono is the uh, is white. the tmo by the way seems like it was a tackle on finn russell after he can you put it on the, the ball screen, please? darcy ray to oh, to the alex allen as well philippe bonaire is having a look for it mm. Just as we're, as we're waiting for the to, to find it, Ben. Just on uh, the new ta no, no wonder Mathieu. Glasgow Sarriva. is showing intensity in the, in, in the tackle and defence because they've hardly had to make any. It's only they've made 38 tackles to Leicester's exactly. 124. 71 percent possession. Well, that's it at the bottom of the screen. You can see the, the reaction. Says, uh, Burns jumping yeah. up right in front of the referee. It happens. It's not Finn, It's not Finn Russell. It's Pat MacArthur. The reserve. He cherches. He cherches. Uh, ça y est, ça arrive. Ça arrive, Mathieu. Voilà. Here it comes. Ah, OK, just penalty kick for me. Yes. Happy with that? Correct. OK. Just tackle after pass. Penalty kick only. He's not with the shoulder. He's dropped. OK. Got, um, got our eye on potential records here. Grizzly ones from a Leicester perspective. At the moment, this is heading to be a record European defeat. It's one point worse than the 42 they conceded uh, in Munster earlier in the season. And a triple change. Nick Grigg is the one that we hadn't mentioned. Scotland seventh international, and he is on along with the um, other two props, Alex Allen and Darcy Ray. Need to beat them. Let me tell you, from the emotions of these subs coming off, when you're coming in a Leicester shirt into 43 nil at home, or you're coming in a, a Glasgow white shirt when you're 43 a lot away from home. There's a real spring in your step when you're coming in, when you're leading. Ah, uh, they're collapsing along. Sorry. I brought the whistle too early, sorry. Let's go, boys. Confirmation that Alex Dunbar is the man who's given up the place. Don't get too early, there's another one just after. Okay. Matt Smith 
by the way. Uh, and for Jack Roberts. Fifteen minutes to go. Touch. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, leave him a space, okay? Put your head in the space. Leave him a space. Yeah, Mark is here, boy. Mark is here, okay. Don't five six of this front row, brand new. Uh, Dan Cole's the only bloke who knew what it was like to play in this scrum in the first half. So, as is often the case, Matteo Reynal, the Frenchman, just having to um, remind the newcomers of how we scrum. Bye. Leave him a space. Leave him a space. Frustration writ large on the face of Ellis Genge. You know, Nick, from a, from a Glasgow Warriors perspective, this, this game was huge in, in every sense to, to qualify for the, the knockout stages of the, the Champions Cup for the first time. It's been, a, it's been the one glaring omission in their CV as they've, as they've devol developed and evolved over the years. You know, to, when Gregor masterminded them to the Pro 12 in 2015, that was the, the first step, if you like, the credibility major silverware, which was a great achievement. But this is the one that I knew he really desperately wanted, and to do it in such style here has been fantastic. Pat Silius for Dan Cole. That's Pat Silius, so more of the more of the South African after, after injury. Carter looking for Gray, didn't find him, but it was picked up by Russell instead. Put through off the boots of Bennett, picked up by Tate. No significant damage done when he was serving his yellow card in the first half. Leicester shipping a couple of tries during his 10 minutes absent. Genge, part of England's 34-man Six Nations squad announced yesterday. But he couldn't hold on to it. And here's Pat MacArthur. Tries to go beyond Brady, but there were too many men back there, and the most significant one was Jack Roberts, young Jack Roberts. As well to put the ball the right side of the flag there, Roberts. Yet again, Glasgow getting outside the defence. Nice pick and chase it. I think it's going to be a line out for Glasgow. Ben, another significant score for Munster. Well, yeah, it's not for Munster. This one's for Rassing. Gets to the corner, just about ball back inside from Teddy Thomas. Chavancy takes it on, takes some finishing this through Zebo, And he just gets that down, goes to the TMO. TMO's happy with it. That now narrows the score and puts Saracens back ahead of Munster in the race for the top two. Taken by Gray, peeled around the corner. They've got another, have they? <laughs> Glasgow are convinced that they have, that they've bundled their way over for a seventh try at Welford Road. Please. Check. Oui, Mathieu. Is it a try, yes or no? Is it a try, yes or no? We have a look. It's like Glasgow are just emptying their whole lo locker of, of work off a line out. It's close, isn't it? It's his elbow, isn't it? Whether his elbow's on the touchline before the ball's gone over the line. Right elbow. There, you can't see. We'll have to see it from the other side, I think, to see where the ball is in relation to the line. Questions try yes or no, so the TMO has to be short. That's, 
Oh, it's a try, I think. It's Darcy see, Ray, think, who's I think um, the ball, bundled yeah. over. I think this is the best angle. Roger, what I see, it's whether I the see ball's only. over the line. That's it definitely right. gets grounded before his elbow goes down. Okay. Is the ball I where I could see the ball there, it wasn't actually at the line. We need to see from the other end. So it will be a touch for the green at five metres. Are you happy with that? Correct. The decision is that Darcy Ray's right That's elbow right. just beat the ball yeah. to the try line. And uh, it'll be a line out. Do you remember those uh, a few years ago, the Glasgow Bath game down at the wreck, where Sean Maitland, who was playing for Glasgow at the time, was centimetres short, which would have taken them through. It's a very different story when the decision goes against you. When you look at the scoreline, top left, 43 nil for you. Taken on by Luke Hamilton. Cleared by Burns. Andy? It's been a very subdued Crombie Terrace down below Time us off. this evening. Time off. Substitution. And they're a, a loyal bunch here at right Welford four. Road in the four games before tonight. Over 100,000 people had come Neither. through the turnstiles, averaging 25,000 a match, but... More than one or two have already decided that they've seen enough this evening. And uh, patiences are being stretched as Tim Swinson, who's been a Goliath tonight, and takes a well-earned rest. Absolutely. He's a Murchie on as well. Stuart Hogg following Swinson to, um, to the dugout. Seymour again hit hard by Hamilton, who's um, who's rolled down his socks and rolled up his sleeves as much as any Leicester player has tonight. It's been an awful evening for them all, but questioning his work rate from number eight. Pissarro is um, not long off, swept up by MacArthur. Ahead of the World Cup winner Corey Flynn this evening. Away, to the final 10 minutes. You know, Nick, I was fully expecting this last 10 minutes to be so nerve wracking because I thought it was going to be really tight and a real arm wrestle and it could be a bonus point see. staying within seven. Just it's astonishing what's happened here today 43 0. No Glasgow supporter would ever, ever. I thought this, and those two, Matt Taylor on the right there and Gregor Townsend, again themselves, they would have expected this to be in a really tight last 10 minutes. They can enjoy it now, they're in the quarterfinals for the first time, great achievement, and there's the captain, he deserves it as well. Gregor Townsend never won here during his time as a player across the border in Northamptonshire. Emphatically going to win here as a, a head coach. When you played in our arena, not many players did win here. That was it. Was a, so, so when Ben was the, it was a really tough place to come. Harry Thacker, held up by the flame head Rob Howley. And this is Genge. Oh, nearly intercepted, but lost forward instead uh, by uh, Ryan Wilson. Yeah. Ah, no, wait. Knock on, never an opportunity to regathering the ball, so it's deliberate for the kick. There's the, uh, there's the outcome. Let's just see what they're going to do with this. Freddie Burns is going to hammer it into the corner. Uh, one more Champions Cup game to bring you tomorrow before the quarter-final lineups complete. We're in Italy, in Parma for Zebre against Wasps, BT Sport 2HD 245. And all the highlights from the final weekend of the four matches straight afterwards around half past five. Uh, and a look ahead to Wednesday's rugby tonight. Next Wednesday, Richard Hibbard is uh, our guest reflections on Europe, previewing the Anglo Welsh and, of course, the Six Nations. Snatched out of the air by Ed Slater, one of those who snarled defiantly all night for Leicester, but they've needed more than snarling defiance against these Warriors.
win a penalty. Flip back by Harrison to Burns and Roberts, and now Matt Smith, the old veteran. But and he'll come back for the penalty. Yeah, you're on the side, swimming on the side. Swimming, swimming on, on the, the side. side. Referee's terminology for loosening your bind and going round the outside. If you're on the outside of a mall and you let go to change your bind, you've unbound and as a result would have to go round to the back foot to re-enter. Harry Thacker, who you might remember started the semi-final against Racing at the City Ground last season. Champions Cup semi-finals. That's in a fair way off right now for Leicester. The quarter-final, honed into view a long while ago for Glasgow, but they've got some defending to do here and to protect that zero scoreline, which will matter to them. Ryan Wilson doing what he can to win that back, and MacArthur's in the middle of the broth. Very good defend, defence there by Glasgow Warriors. Packer really wheeling his way through. Freddie Burns calling for it, Don Barrow's there as well. So good to see Don Barrow back in a Leicester shirt. And he's been held up. Well, Gregor talks about little targets, Nick. I bet you, and you never thought this, this would be one of them. He's now thinking, the Matt Taylor sitting alongside him thing. Keep that scoreline nil. To nil, Leicester Tigers here at Welford Road will be a target they've got now. It's obviously inconsequential in the game, they've won, it's brilliant. But that'll, that'll be the little things, Nick, that they'll be talking about. That's what they'll probably talk about at half time. Can they keep it? That's Matt Taylor, the defence coach, and Gregor Townsend's left there. He'll be desperate seven, to keep Leicester nil here. Seven Leicester. Leicester seven, please. Will Evans. A little over five minutes to go, replacing Lockie McCaffrey. You and I were watching that night in, uh, in Paris before Christmas, Andy, when we wondered after the win against Racing whether that was Glasgow's greatest ever European moment. I suspect that this overtakes that now. Yeah, surely. it does. For the context of the, the importance of it, having to come to Elford Road, a team with such European hit history and pedigree, it's always quite fitting that they've, they've done it here, which is always going to be such a great trip, but with such a performance. You know, to come out of this group with uh, with Munster and Leicester with uh, their Heineken Cup, Champions Cup pedigree, but also, remember, the reigning French champions and losing Champions Cup finalists last year. But Glasgow come out of this group with, with such quality now, with wins a home and away against Leicester, and home and away against Racing, they fully deserved it, and it's been an outstanding campaign so far. Warriors at the moment heading towards their biggest, biggest in terms of numbers ever win in Europe. But it's their biggest ever win in Europe, and it is beyond doubt. And uh, it's a long trip, but my goodness, it was worthwhile. Wow. I mean, it is. You know, Nick, I reckon there's. Arguably, there's just as many Glasgow Warriors fans here today at Leicester that sort of watched some of my games back in the, when I came back in 1999. This is how far this club has come, winning major trophies and coming to Welford Road with a huge, with a big support that are vociferous, get behind the team. That's what they've created at Scotstoun. It's a really intimidating place to come, and it's uh, this club really is on the move. Your help, Will. Ben, what have you got? Oh, there's been another score at Tomond. This time Munster to move ahead of Saracens in second seed. Wide play, brilliantly picked up from and Andrew Conway. The fend drags in three defenders and what an offload inside to Ian Keatley. Absolutely brilliant. They move back up into second seeding. And that one by Brian Milano Essi. Six foot eight and 21 stones of him. He's um, served his suspension, not the first this season, he tends to pick up suspensions the way he plays and the size of him, but he's back with us doing what he does best right now.
here. I mean, that passage play almost sums up the humiliation for Leicester, isn't it? They're getting mauled on Welford Road here to, to well, concede well, penalties. Conceded the penalty at the scrum yeah. on the Warriors line to get that line out drive. Any man of the match time. Well, you know, I could you could easily give it to the whole Glasgow Warriors squad. They've been utterly outstanding. Finn Russell's pulled the, the strings at 10, he's been mercurial at his best. But I have to say, I think Tim Swinson in the second row, he's carried unbelievably well, he's scored a try, he's tackled. For me, Tim Swinson is the Heineken man of the match. Tim Swinson was a man of the match in a losing cause last weekend, very much a winning cause this weekend. And uh, Ellis Genge has been yellow carded, and uh, Sam Harrison having to do a job to calm him down. Ellis Genge is not a happy camper right now. I don't think Sam Harrison realised they'd been Sinbin and was trying to get him to get back 10. I think Ellis Genge said, No, no, I've been carded. I'm off. side in front of the front man of them all well, he would have um, bounced up those steps at the beginning of the game with a, a little bit of trepidation knowing that they needed at least two points from this contest to make the quarterfinals he fair floats down them at the end of it Glasgow floating into the quarterfinals into the final minute advantage knock on Four tries in the first half. It was all over then. But they've scored two more in the second. And he hopes of a seventh. Um, rather frustrated by Tommy Seymour and the ball colliding off his chest. Well, I never Back thought on. I'd say this at Welford Road, Nick, but a bit disappointed with that line out that Glasgow couldn't get a chance of 50 points. That has, that has been how remarkable this game has been. An outstanding performance in the first half, they've continued it in the second, they've not been able to play the champion rug in the second half that they produced the first half, but, you know, it's been an unbelievable performance, fully deserved, they've dominated every facet of play and uh, humiliated Leicester Tigers in their home patch. And minute by minute, yeah, they we, have we depopulated Welford Road. More and more red and green and white seats have become apparent over the last 15 minutes. My goodness. My goodness. Left and left. been a, a record Set. gruesome night for Leicester it's been a record brilliant night a memorable night for Glasgow and they might get more chipped on by Pergos and stretching for the sanctity of the sideline is Freddie Burns